Hello, hello, good morning. It's your girl Sharita, the Behavior and Literacy Strategist, coming at you from the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute, where you can find solutions for both your child's behavior and literacy challenges, y'all. What's up, what's up? Good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful morning. I just uh, finished reading to Maya's class over the, over, you know, Zoom. Not Zoom, it was WebEx. Move this curtain out of the way. It was Webex, and we did a, uh, I read Green Eggs and Ham to her class, and it was very good. Um, a nice little experience, and did the same thing to with Jazzy's class when she was in preschool. I came to read to the class, but it wasn't virtual, <laughs> okay? I was there. So it was nice to experience that today. So I have a really good topic for you today. It's about focus for our children, okay? This is a big topic. Every time I talk to them, I'm doing a consultation. And even when I talk to teachers, it also, um, it's just a regular part of our language now. Talking about kids being unfocused or distracted or not being able to focus, right? So I wanted to talk to you today and have you think a little bit differently when it comes to your child's focus issues and focus challenges, Okay. All right, first let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Sharita Morgan. I, I um, uh, have, um, I'm the behavior and literacy strategist. I have a background as a mental health specialist, working with children with behavior disorders and challenges, and also as a special education teacher. Same kids, just in the classroom, and I taught them academically as well. Alicia, my people is here this morning. <laughs> Alicia is here. Oh, man. So, when I was a mental health specialist, I was hanging out with my girl Alicia, right? Also, a mental health specialist, we was holding it down with the challenge program, okay? You couldn't mess with us. We had going on, right, girl? <laughs> we were doing big things with the kids, right? Helping them improve their behavior, behavior modification, social skills, getting, getting it together, right? A lot of transformation. We saw a lot of transformations in our day, and that's what it's all about. So I'm so excited to see you uh, here today, because girl, I know you know what I'm what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Got an expert on the line today. How's everything? How the husband? How the kids doing? How your girls doing? We both have all girls, no sons, just all girls, right? You have all girls, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yep. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, we know we get it in. We get it in, right? And I know, and you are a, a therapist now, right? Tell me a little bit about um, what you're doing. Oh, yep. All girls. <laughs> yep. So while me and Lily chatting it up, I want to tell you, uh, yes, um, I worked as a special education teacher uh, after that. And then I combine behavior modification and academic learning in the classroom. Why? Because when I went there, I had a class that, um, you know, they had behavior disorders and challenges and they, and they had a lot of behavior problems. And they would be fighting, running out of the classroom, cursing at the teachers. And they really weren't, you know, they, they weren't doing any work at all. Okay. And they just kept getting substitute after substitute after substitute. They didn't have a permanent teacher, but since I had a behavior uh, modification background, and like Alicia here, right? We did what we did. You know, we make it do what it do. They put me in that classroom, okay? And they, the principal just told me, like, I asked him what you want me to accomplish this year, because I was all bright eyed and bushy tail, like, <gasps> And he was just like, just keep them in the classroom, okay? <laughs> That's all I need you to do. Alicia says, yes. Uh, LCSW, go, girl. Y'all, I didn't know that, but I got to give you your props. And I provide contracted therapy sessions for children via IEP and other referrals is needed. Awesome! Girl, I'm not surprised. I know you're killing it. I know you're doing your thing. <laughs> I know, and I know they, they love you, too. Oh, my gosh. Yes, everybody need Alicia uh, Agabello in their life. Okay, <laughs> you need that in every school around every school. Like you need to definitely be referring your kids 
to her. She's awesome. Right, girl? So what I learned there um, when I was working with the kids is uh, while I went in there, I'm like, okay, I know that they expect me to just manage our behavior, but this is a classroom. Y'all going to learn how to read. Y'all going to learn how to write and spell. You're going to learn how to do math, and you're going to listen. You're going to follow directions. You're going to do your classwork. You're going to prove your grades and all this stuff. So, But I couldn't do just one. I couldn't just teach them academically because their behavior was such a challenge. And I couldn't just handle their behavior because a lot of the reason why they act that out so much is because academically they were struggling and they were so below grade level and they were used to using these behaviors to get out of doing their work. Why do kids be leaving the classroom and running out of the classroom? Why is it that every time it's time to uh, do the work, they tell you, to, the teacher say, okay, now get started. They're like, I got to use the bathroom. They don't really have to use the bathroom. They're trying to get out of doing the work, okay? So the classroom needed a lot of structure, and it was a lot of growth in that classroom. Kids started reading. They started doing their homework. They started improving. We had monthly meetings. I had monthly meetings with the kids and their moms. Oh, that's where I get that from because I do that in my program. Every month. We meet and we go over, they had a behavior and academic contract and goals on it. And we went over it every month and we saw the progress and, I'm, and then they would take it home and put it on the fridge, you know, for their mom and I would meet with their mom and stuff. So we, we made a lot of growth there. And now with my tutoring coaching program, I do both. Now, I do not just teach academically. I do not just, just work to get kids reading on, on or above their grade level. I can't do that unless I address the behaviors. And the, the thoughts, the, the mindset that the kids have and the patterns that they have developed towards doing their work, that's getting in the way of them being successful at the same time, okay? So that's a little background. That's what that's what this is about today. Um, and I want to talk again about the focus because I think sometimes we think, or a lot of times, we think about kids and their focus uh, the wrong way. First of all, whenever you use the word can't, right? You might as well sit down, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, Alicia? We don't, we, don't, we don't say that, right? You might as well sit down. No matter what it is in life, if you say can't, he can't focus, um, I can't finish this on time, or I can't, um, I can't uh, 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 drive this to this place I've ever driven here before. I don't know how to do it, so I'm just not going to do it. That's you sitting down. So, um, when we say that ourselves, that means we don't believe that our children can focus. And when we say it around them, they start saying it. I can't focus. Okay? This is why in my program, you're not allowed to say can't. I can't. I don't know. You're not allowed to say that because we always figure it out. And instead of saying that my son or my daughter can't focus, try this instead. Teach them how to focus. Teach them how to focus, okay? Now, that can happen in a matter of minutes. And I'm going to tell you about experience I had last night. <laughs> Alicia, you're going to be bugging out. I'm going to tell you about experience I had last night where it was not going too good. Let's talk, talk about kids being unfocused. So I have a group, uh, early learning group, because I teach and work with kids from early learning age, it's preschool, kindergarten. You have to be at least four to be in my program. And my oldest student is in high school, right? And I have different groups. So uh, just got three new students at the same time. All of them, the same week. They all started the same week. They all started on Monday. So I had two students already. One of them, which is my daughter, Maya. She is uh, has been learning how to read and spell and even write sentences I'm, i've done work with her but she she's heard me uh teach so many times that she picked up on so much so she she when she started the class i'm like oh you really know this stuff right so she's doing pretty good and and i have another student that's getting ready to leave he is uh in kindergarten now and i have him reading a first grade level story having writing sentences spelling uh, counting to 100, counting by fives and tens, and working on twos, and just a host of other things. Oh my gosh, it's sight words. Just phenomenal, right? He don't need me no more. So he about to, <laughs> he about to leave. So um, three new students. All of them have issues with focus. All of them have issues with sitting down, right? 
And then when it's time to work, they all want to leave. And then a new thing that kids know now, because this is the virtual age, if they don't want to pay attention, they want you to focus on them and talk to them about their behavior over and over. They know how to press the mute button and turn off the camera. <laughs> so these little babies doing this, right? <laughs> let me see. Let me see real quick. Uh, Alicia says, I truly think, well, we should read it. <laughs> My girls are in virtual school and there are times they are acting out. Let me see. It won't let me, it won't let me uh, do it for some reason. On the bottom part of my phone, my husband get ready to get uh, a new screen protector for me because it's giving me problems. There it is. Okay. Um, I realized there's something about the teacher's instruction that is not reaching them. Huh. That's a factor too. I hug them like I love them. Well, oh, I know your, loves are, your hugs are so awesome. And identify what the disconnect is. Recently for math, it was as simple as my child needed linking, uh, blocking for math. She is visual and needed tangible objects to decompose numbers. Oh, what? On Amazon, she thought on Amazon changed her little math life. Nice, awesome. <laughs> now that is that is important too. With the virtual, is not easy. Oh, blocks. Okay, I see what you're saying. Blocks. Virtual is not easy. Um, because, uh, this is the thing with virtual y'all and I, and I get moms in some moms in the beginning, some moms are just like, all right, fine, let's get it, let's get it going. Right. Some moms are a little hesitant because like my child doesn't sit, uh, well on their own. They need one-on-one -on -one. and virtual will not work for them because they are, you know, it's through the computer. They will really be unfocused. Right. But here's the good thing about virtual. Like I said, with the focus and teaching our children how to focus, we're thinking about it the wrong way. Virtual is so good if you do it right, right? Virtual is so good because, uh, especially in my program, I teach children to not need somebody to stand next to them and make sure they do what they need to do. So they learn how to function independently. And the benefit of me not being right there means you got to do it. Mom's not in the room. I'm not in the room. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're going to lose points. You're still held accountable. These are the rules. This is what I expect you to do. When it's time to write, I expect that pistol in your hand. I expect your eyes in that paper. I expect that pistol to be moving. Nothing changed. Act like I'm in the house with you. Just because I'm through the camera don't mean nothing, right? <laughs> but virtual, uh, virtual learning gives our children the benefit of, of uh, the experience of being independent and functioning independently. So it's between them and their paper. They have to make sure they sit properly, okay? Yeah, it is hard. So let me tell you what happened last night, girl. Let me tell you what happened last night. So when it's time to, when, as long as you know, you've seen everybody like, hi, how's everybody doing? Hello, how's your day? Everybody say hi, they want to talk and everything. When they have to wait their turn, when they have to write something, all that stuff, that's when all of their distracted and unfocused behaviors came out. So I had kids spinning around in the chair, <laughs> touching and muting and unmuting and turning the camera off, touching the phone and moving it all around, getting up to leave, hiding underneath the camera, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like they was hiding underneath the camera too. Talking, I have one of my students like she like to say, I have a question. I'm hungry. Girl, that is not a question. I have a question. Uh, do cars run fast? You know what I mean? I have a question. It's cold in here, right? But this is girl, this is not you just what it you just used to being able to say this instead of doing work. She just started this when she had to write a sentence, okay? So we were all writing the sentence together. We were all writing, and everybody had to tell me what the next letter is, new sounds and stuff. Team writing, right? All this stuff comes out. So, so while it's going on, I know that if I continue, we were in the middle of a sentence. I had to pull, you know, I had to pull it fast or switch it up. I had to flip the script, right? Because now, and I always say this, you can't teach and do behavior at the same time. And I'm not going to teach and do behavior at the same time. I'm not going to teach while you're not paying attention, while you are talking. You can't talk while I'm talking. And it's not effective, right? So, 
what I did is, uh, and it, this is what you were talking about earlier, connecting with the students. I had to reach them and I had them want, to, I had to make sure they wanted to be engaged. But that's only half of it. The other half is they need responsibility. They need accountability. And a lot of times we mess up because we, we think that the only reason that they are not participating or doing their work or staying on task is because they are not engaged enough. Now, my classes definitely are, are fun. You know, kids get really engaged. They get motivated. I talk junk. I challenge them. It's really good. You know what I mean? So even the oldest kid, you know, they really want to be in and stuff. But that's only part of it. That means that I'm taking all of the responsibility for their uh, 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 performance, for their participation, okay? And it's 50-50, honey, all right? And if, and if uh, you are going to be successful, talking to kids here, then you have to have a self-party. Self-awareness, self-motivation, self-discipline, self-control, self-accountability, right? So they had to do that. And you can teach that to little kids. So this is what I did. All right. So I switched it. I said, all right, now we'll finish that sentence tomorrow. Like, I, I, I didn't care about it no more. All right? I said, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to sing the alphabet. I had one student stand up and sing the alphabet. Now, I she had difficulty with L, M, N, O, P. We got to fix that. Right? You know how kids do. A, B, C, D, E, H, D, H, I, J, K, B, L, 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 P. What was that? Right? <laughs> so, they had to fix that part. Okay? But everyone was going to have a part. So, Maya had to start. She had to sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then my next student, H-I-J-K, and the next student, Elemental P, next student, right? That takes a tremendous amount of what? Focus. I'm teaching them how to focus because I can't teach you how to identify letter sounds if you're not focused, if you're doing all the things that you were doing, right? All behaviors. So everybody have a part, right? And um, so this, I have them sing it first. Now, I, I let kids mess stuff up. I let them do it wrong the first time so that I can identify what the problem is so that I can make a plan for it. So uh, singing in and they don't know when they're there, when it's time for them to sing or when it's time for them to sing their part, then they may be looking around or they may say it wrong or whatever, but playing around. So now I have to put in the structure and say, okay, so this is your part. This is your part. This is your part. This is your part. If you are not, uh, ready when I get to you, then I'm going to sing your part. You're going to get skipped. Okay. Now, in order for you to be able to sing your part, I need you all to sit in your seat properly. If I see you doing this, I have to teach them how to sit, how to fall. If I see you doing this and spin your chair around, you get skipped. I'm going to sing it for you and we're going to move on. If I see you touching the camera, okay. If I see this, I'm moving my laptop all around crazy because that's what they're doing to me, making me dizzy. If I see all of this, you get skipped. If I see, if I hear you talking, it's not your turn. You're going to get skipped. I might have needed that because the girl's a chatterbox, just like her mama, okay? And she thinks that she is the assistant hostess. She thinks so. So when everybody comes, I'm like, hey, everybody, welcome. She's like, hey, everybody, welcome. How you doing? Tell me about your day. Girl, you are not, you're one of the students, okay? <laughs> So Maya be getting in. So she be talking a lot when she's not supposed to talk. You lose points for that. Okay? So they have the points. So they have the structure, right? But if you're not ready, you're going to get skipped. So now, what's going to happen? We start singing. And then when, if they're not ready, I see they part form and next. Next. Next thing you know, everyone's sitting properly in their chairs. Except one of them was playing with his cell phone so much that he logged himself out. The rest of them were still there. And all of them were paying attention. All of them were sitting properly, eyes on the screen, not moving. Because I taught them exactly how I wanted them to sit. I taught them to look, right? And then I'm, you know, I'm singing it and everything. If you got, if you're not ready, I skip you. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care about a child crying. Okay, you know me, right? <laughs> I do not care. You got skipped. So after a couple of tries, everybody was paying attention. Everybody was doing their part. Now, we have to teach them to be independent. So now, guys, what I need you to do is you're going to sing your parts. 
But Miss Shavita is not going to tell you who goes next. Now you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. So you know what when your turn is. Maya, you have to sing loud enough so that my next student, right, knows uh, that her turn is coming up. And honey, you make sure that you listen to Maya so that when it's your turn, you are ready. Okay? And then you have to sing loud enough so that the next student, so I've taught them, everybody, how to pay attention, how to listen, really listen and make sure, okay? How to, uh, so that when their part comes. So first I did it with them and I've taught them. I said, Miss Reed is not going to say anything. So I just sat there. And then I say one and a two and a one, two, three, go! And then Mike started and I sat there like this. Everybody sang their part. Everybody was paying attention. Nobody missed the beat. Everyone sang loud enough. Every chair was still. All little eyes were on the screen. Everyone did a beautiful job. And afterwards, I lost it. Like, yeah, you did it! What great teamwork, right? Every child can learn how to focus. Every child. Even if they're in a, if they've never uh, had to sit and focus before, if they have this as a problem, even if they've been diagnosed with ADHD, every child can learn how to focus. When you put the structure in place, when you raise your expectations, and when you set it up, and then when you step back and expect them to do it and don't say anything. A lot of times we uh, don't want to step back. And let them and, and let them figure it out other times we also don't want them to miss out so we try to overcompensate for that okay so when I was reading to Maya's class you know uh, they had to, they had uh, three adults in the room and they were talking to them about sitting down on the, on the carpet and then and listening to the story but they also probably could have benefited from if anybody stands up, and if they were in my class, if you get out of your seat once, you miss that point. Because one of the things you need to do is remain seated. Up, oh, you miss that point. They learn that, I don't want to miss that point. I got to make sure, ah, uh, at first. But then after a while, they don't want to miss that point. So they make sure they stay seated. So some accountability. If I make this move, this is the consequence. I don't want this consequence, so I'm going to stay here. And we have to set it up at first. So... They were, some of them were moving around, walking around, you know what I mean? Three of them, probably the same ones to do it all the time. We know in the classroom how that happens, right? But the the adults in the room, the teachers and the paraprofessionals were like trying to just, they were responsible for telling them to sit down and walking them back to the carpet and getting them to sit down and talking to them. Like, listen to the story, listen to the story. When kids hear that, they don't think I need to sit down and I'm responsible for it. They think you're going to make me sit down. You're going to make me sit down. And I want you to do it again and again and again and again and again. That's how kids think, right? Uh, Alicia said, I love how you framed that too. Could have could have benefited from. Right, right. You know why? Because I don't play the blame game. And I don't criticize. Like, like uh, when it comes to being a mom, okay? Because that mess ain't perfect. We figure it out as we go along. And teachers work hard. I was a teacher in the classroom, so I know, right? <laughs> teachers work very hard. So uh, it's not that they don't do their job. It's that, you know, they are they are working hard. They have all the kids, you know, at the same time. Sometimes kids want to be the class clown. They want to disrupt the class and everything like that. So, you know, we, we're all growing. We're absolutely all growing and we all learn. And Maya's teacher is awesome. She is so, uh, she's the perfect first teacher for Maya. She's absolutely awesome, right? So, um, and my purpose for talking to moms, coming on here live and working with moms is, is for, and not to fight against the school or to criticize the school or nothing like that, but, but it's for us to just be empowered and understand um, our kids' behavior patterns and understand how they think and understand how to move them to the next level. And when you make changes at home, right because you're aware of your child's cycle right <laughs> how they do things and how they're thinking and what their their intention is and everything and you mix that with teaching them how to function independently when it's time for homework 
teaching them how to study. I'm teaching my middle school boy group how to study. Team study with each other and stuff like that. So there's a lot of interesting things going on there. When you teach them how to study, you teach them how to sit and work by themselves for a while and, and check over their own work and do all this other stuff, then you definitely going to notice changes in the classroom, okay? Because a lot of it has to do with the way that the kids are thinking and certain behaviors they have. This stuff doesn't make them bad kids. It's just they started this and it worked. So they put that junk on repeat. And this is just what I do all the time. It's now part of the way. It's their cycle. It's part of the way they do it. So we as moms can interrupt the cycle and make sure that and, and replace it with something else. You know, and I know that's what we do, right, Alicia? You drop it like this girl that I'm just trying to trying to spread some love because I know it is hard, okay? <laughs> I know it's hard as moms. But yeah, that that was a big deal. Now I could have went the other way. I could have just uh could try to continue the sentence and then they would have continued their behavior, right? And then the next day. Uh, the next, well, they, they got, they have me three days a week. This is the last day. Now I'm going to meet with their moms to help them build some structure at home and tell them about how to, how to first meet with. So I'll see them again on Monday. I cannot wait, right? Monday when it came and then I'll be doing the same thing and they'll be doing the same thing. And then next time, it, but now I know that I'm going to, I've seen all their behaviors and actions. So I know that I'm going to work on structure. Even if they know, some of them know their ABCs. It's not about learning your ABCs. You know what I mean? It's about learning, uh, sing my part and be ready. It's about learning how to sit properly. If I can teach you how to do that, and you can do that independently uh, by yourself, mom won't feel like she has to keep coming in the room because she thinks you're all over the place, which I'll be telling moms, they good. I don't care if they get out of their chair and spin around. Because they'll lose a point for that. We're going to get that together, right? <laughs> right? And the more that I work on the focus, when I'm ready to start practicing, learning those sight words, honey, uh, y'all going to be on point. Because we got we took care of that first. Lisa said, I'm taking notes. I want to roll my girls for your summer camp in 2022. Oh, my. Don't say that. I want to be. Look. Dumb girls, I'm going to be looking all in their face, and I'm going to try not to show favoritism, all right? Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that, Alicia. <laughs> I'm going to try not to show favoritism. Oh, my gosh. I have one student in my program right now. I know his mom since I was a kid. I love that kid to death. And, oh, my gosh, I just love him so much. But you know what, though? I'm hard on him, though. I'm hard on him because... Uh, I know that he uh, is a champion and I know he can do better. So just as much as I love him to death and we used to say I love you. He stopped saying that to me, you know, because he in middle school now and he got other middle school boys in the group. He don't never say I love you no more. He don't say that to me no more. <laughs> That's like my little cousin. So they're like, no. <laughs> he said they need your support. Yeah, you know, but, but you know, uh, I'm here for you, girl. I'm here for you. And I have high expectations and stuff. So I would love them and I would get on them and I would have high expectations for them and have them go to the next level, next level, next level. And then after they leave, I would be like, oh, they're so cute. I do that with my own daughter. I do that with Maya. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm here for you, girl. Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Yes. Yeah, so, um, but you hear what I'm saying, Alicia? If I would have done that, I would be doing that same dance every every class. And they would be doing the same dance every single class. And then next thing you know, when we do our monthly action plan review, they wouldn't have any growth. And I'm not about that. They have to, every month, I want moms to be saying, yeah, I noticed this changed and that changed. And I'm hearing this from the teacher. I want her to see some progress herself. And I want to tell her, this is what we accomplished. This, these were our goals. This is what we accomplished. We also accomplished this and this. Or this is what needs to happen for them to get to this level. I need to see growth every month. So I don't play around with that. <laughs> I don't play around. So I got to get on my students and then we're going to make it happen, okay? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. But yeah, it was, a, it was a crazy. You should have seen it for about 10 minutes. And it was loud and... They weren't really paying attention and all this other stuff. But we got it together. We got it together. And if and if 
kids, uh, if your child, I'm t- talking to everybody now, if your child is unfocused at the moment, doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them. It just means that they haven't learned how to focus yet. All this is temporary. Whatever you want your child to accomplish, uh, they will accomplish. It's just how do we make that happen? How do we make that happen? Because when we say you can't focus and then when kids say, I can't focus, uh, and that's an excuse. That's a big excuse. That's a reason to sit down. That's a reason not to try. That's a reason not to do your best. A whole bunch of stuff go with that, okay? And I and one student that when he first started, he was in middle school and he said, I can't, um, I, I have a problem, Ms. Rita. I'm sorry. He was a positive. I'm sorry. I have a problem. I can't focus. You know, I can't do it. And I was like, don't you ever say that. You can't say that in here. You can't. And he was touching everything and, and blurting out and moving around, getting up out of his chair, going in the kitchen. What you going in the kitchen for? We're in class, right? And so, you know, he back there, he drinking and he chilling and he got something to eat. He was doing all of that. Was it because he couldn't control himself? That's what he's been hearing all these years and that's what we think. Or was it because he's been able to, he heard that and learned it and been able to use that as an excuse? So I got on him about that, okay? And I'm hard on him too, because I love him, okay? And and I changed his thinking. And now when he sits, he sits in the chair. Now he doesn't have some days where he just chooses to act up. But if you catch him in his regular, he just, you know, chilling. He not trying to act up. And that's more often than not, he's sitting down the whole time. He's not touching everything. He can look at you and have a conversation with you. It's very calm. Think about it. When your child is playing a game or watching TV or uh, eating something or doing something they really like, can they sit down? Then they can sit down. they just not sitting down here and there are reasons for that. So instead of us saying he can't focus and don't allow our kids to say, I can't focus or I have a problem with focus. And please don't allow them to, even if they have ADHD, they've been diagnosed with ADHD, please don't allow them to say, it's my ADHD, I have ADHD. That's why. Because it's the way they think about it. As soon as they say that, then that's a uh, forever excuse and they don't have to try. So you got shit, change that language, cut it, up, cut it out. Don't allow them to say that. Because those thoughts aren't growing. Ask yourself, is this growing him? Or is it helping him stay the same? Is this growing her? Is she getting to the next level? Is it helping her think it? Is it helping her feel proud of herself? Is it helping her get to the next level? Is it helping her go after it? Or is it helping her stay here at a comfort level? Anything like that, you got to cut it out and replace it with my favorite phrase that I got all my kids saying, I got this. <laughs> I got this. They start to read the word and like, it's got to be tough. You say you're frustrated. Like, no, no, no. I got this. Because I taught them that. I got this. When you say I got this, your brain does something else. Take the word focus out. We replace it with concentrate. So when I say you got to focus on the word, you know what I mean? I can easily say that too. Because a lot of times they're not reading the word. They can't because they're not focused on it. They're thinking of other stuff. And they there's a block. I've been having trouble reading all this time. So this word in front of me. I don't really want to read it. I don't think I can read it. That That's like closing their eyes. They cannot, I'm telling you, they cannot see the word. But if I say, look at it, my new student that, that's in Jamaica right now, I'm so excited. We're out of the United States now. He's in Jamaica. And he and he was looking at a word, and I'm like, I felt like he could read that word. And he was reading it wrong, and I'm like, no, look at it. Now look at it. Look at it again. You got this. Say, I got this. And then all of a sudden, he's like, and he read it. So it's not that they can't read it. They're not looking. There's a block. So when I say, uh, I used to say focus on the word. But I don't want them to be using that word because of the connotation it has now. So I say concentrate. You'll get it. Concentrate. And then I teach him the strategy and stuff like that. And what I want him to concentrate on right then. And he figures it out. Okay. So instead of saying that my child can't focus, instead of allowing our children to say or think that they can't focus, instead teach them how to focus. Teach them how to concentrate. 
Teach them how to concentrate and focus with their bodies, with their ears, with their eyes, with their thinking. Teach them how, okay? And then expect them to do it. Because that's how we do it here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's it, y'all, for today. Um... Felicia, I'm about to do my yoga. I usually do my yoga around this time, but I was do I was reading to Maya's class. <laughs> so I gotta do my yoga. And this is a solid day for me. So I told you I was doing this the self-care, and I always tell y'all moms, like, y'all self-care is a priority. You want your children to improve their behavior, improve their uh, literacy, and you know, improve their, their focus and concentration. We moms have a tendency to then throw everything into that. You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. So that when things get tough, when we get confused, when it looks like it's not working, when they are resisting, that we stay, stay, you know, focused on our goal and we stay committed. The only way you're going to do that is if you take care of yourself. So your girl's about to go do her yoga. I'm about to eat my big salad and have some fruit and just chill. And then I got some work to do. So I don't have any consultations today, but I have some work to do. And I have one day out of the week, Thursday, unless it gets really busy where I keep it open. All right. So homegirl's going to really chill today. And then when I go pick up my girls from school, I'm going to be feeling great. And then, you know, I can be mom. That's how we do it. At least said, nice girl. Keep posting the. Oh, yeah, the salads, <laughs> they motivate you. Yeah, girl, they'll tell. And they, let me tell you, Lily, those salads are way bigger than what they look like in a picture. <laughs> those salads are humongous, okay? <laughs> humongous. Because greens make me feel good. So I eat a lot of those greens and I eat fruit. And, you know, some nuts. I put, like, raw nuts in my smoothie and everything. And then I'm not hungry until the next day. Like, it works out. But, girl, those salads be looking smaller than they really are. It'd be some real, you know, hungry man dinners. That'd be a hungry girl salad right there. Let me tell you. <laughs> Alicia, I love you so much. I'm always so happy to see you here from you. We post it. Uh, you know, all the time. Sometimes we, we both comment on the same post. Sometimes we post on each other's. Uh, uh, comment on each other's posts and stuff like that. You always in my heart, girl. I never forgot about you. Nobody from the channel program that I will forget about. But I love you. Deep down, I love you. You know, and I'm here for you. You know what I mean? All the time, okay? So I'll talk to you soon. Come back anytime. We'll chit chat sometime soon. You can always send me a message. I'm going to send you a message after this because I'm just feeling love right now. I just want to say what's up. All right? <laughs> And for the rest of everybody else, thank you so much for uh, joining, for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, and for more information on my tutoring and coaching program, it's for behavior and literacy challenges, approving both at the same time. But also, by moms kept asking me about this, I do math word problems, teaching children how to read, uh, comprehend, understand, uh, solve, and then create math word problems and what do you need for that you need to learn how you not you need to know how to read it so they do be learning how to read and get better at reading there and and you need reading comprehension right which i do in literacy but also in math because you got to understand what the problem is asking you but then you also need the math skills so if my students i'm giving you a math problem and it's multiplication and if you don't know your multiplication tables i work on that too so whatever what whatever they don't know they will know and i'm nosy so, and they said I'm like the CIA. That's what my, my students told me. I'm nosy. I pay attention to everything. So whatever your child doesn't know that they should know, they will know. And whatever they are doing that might not seem like a big deal to other people or they might miss uh, behavior-wise, that's getting in the way of them learning, uh, getting, getting, uh, uh, becoming successful academically or doing their work. I notice everything. I cannot help it that gets addressed to and replaced with something else. So we want our children to be able to sit in the classroom by themselves and not need a paraprofessional or the teacher or anybody to keep them on task. We want them to keep themselves on task. We don't want the teachers and everybody to get their materials ready for them. We want them to do that themselves. 
We don't want anybody to have to force them to stay in their seats. We want them to have self-control and self-discipline. Stay in their seats themselves, okay? We want this for our kids. So ultimately, we want our kids, and I want all of your kids, to function independently and be able to read at or above their grade level. And we're settling for nothing less. Nothing less at all, all right? All right, love y'all. Uh, okay, for more information on my tutoring and coaching program, before I forget, go to growthinstitute.mypajabi.com. That's G-R-O-W-T-H, because that's what we focus on here. Institute.mypajabi.com. Or you can send me a direct message, y'all. I love to chat. And sometimes moms uh, post, uh, I'm sorry, schedule uh, consultations through there. Your free consultation, okay? If you're looking for a tutor, that's going to help you improve behavior at the same time. All right? Believe in yourselves. Believe in your child, honey. Believe in your children. And always remember... That growth is unlimited. Peace. <laughs> Bye, Lily. Talk to you in a minute.